Hi everyone, welcome to the first of a series of clips on how to build my Helm's Deep level. It's my tribute to one of my favourite uh, Lord of the Rings films, The Two Towers. And if you've seen that film, this is the area, the scene when the uh, Helm's Deep castle is under siege by the orcs and uh, the heroes have to defend the castle. And it all looks like all is lost, okay? So what we've got here is we've created this little small little toy box map and I've taken note not to go too big. Uh, I've built a castle uh, and a section of the wall with a forest opposite. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build the castle. That yourself, anyone can build using the tools. But I have included a document, a link of screenshots of the picture of the castle, just so you can see different angles of how I've put it together. But the building bit's the easy bit. That's the bit that's not straightforward. What we're going to concentrate in is the logic to make the battle uh, last. There's a number of set stages to this. So the section that we're focusing on is the wall. Uh, and I'm building this how I would build the level from scratch. So the first thing would be is build the actual map, little, little semi-section of it. And now we're going to fill in the wall part. Now, this wall doesn't actually get blown up until halfway through the battle, but I need to get the logic in first. And you'll notice I'm not using the castle blocks. I'm using the basic shapes to fill the rest of the wall. Uh, and the reason for that is the basic shapes are the only things I can control to move. The castle bits won't move at all, they're, st they're stuck, so I have to use the building blocks so I can ex make them explode and move across it uh, when they uh, penetrate the wall. Now, one thing you also notice in here is, you'll see that I'm using three bricks and then a single brick. Yeah, and I'm making sure that the pattern is unique all the way across the bottom. So as I finish off building the wall, uh, you'll see that it's not 100% perfect, it doesn't matter. But what is important is the returning wall doesn't tally. So you'll now notice I'm making sure that they don't fit directly on top. They are all slightly out of sync. And that is extremely important for the effect that I'm looking for. So as you'll see in here, I'm just going to keep repeating myself. The bricks can't match up. They have to be slightly out of sync. And I've just done now uh, three levels. And the wall itself is two sections thick. Yeah, because it has to match up on the screen. But like I say, just keep going in and out, three bricks, one brick, three bricks, one brick, all the way across, and making sure that the pattern doesn't match anything below it, or above it, whichever level you've done. I'm just speeding through, because it's just building bricks, which we can all do quite relatively quite easy. Alright, it's not too bad. So we've now got the front wall of the, car, of the wall, yeah? And we're now going to do the back wall. Uh, and then we'll colour all this area in afterwards as well. Uh, but the plan here basically is that um, in the particular scene of the film, the orcs uh, make a kamikaze uh, attack at the wall and they blow up the wall after you've, you've, you've been defending from several waves of enemies. So the problem with this effect that we're going to do here is we're going to have the effect of the castle wall blowing up, but we're actually not going to get to show you how we actually trigger that explosion until about our fifth or sixth clip of the series that I've got planned which I'm hoping to get rolled out throughout this week so keep an eye out make sure you'll uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of these clips but I'll just carry on finishing off this wall here and there's the final layer going into place which is almost done now when we blow up the the wall we're not going to blow up everything we're only going to blow up a small section of it just enough for a load of troops to get through uh, and we wanted it towards the um, towards the wall not too close to the castle so they have to run through giving you time to defend it a little bit longer so that's the wall done there now now we need to use our creativity toys to actually create the explosion so let's jump to that now like I mentioned we're not going to actually blow the cut the wall up until halfway through our level but we need to test that the explosion works so what we're going to do is we're going to put some toys in that we're only going to be temporary so what we'll use is some uh, buttons uh, to test our particular logic yeah so we're going to create three buttons here that you're going to need to use and when we finish the actual toy box level completely these buttons will be removed now like most of my other toy boxes I use logic gates uh, and my logic gates are the key parts of which stages to run so when you input a signal into one gate it will do these objects so these buttons are going to act as my triggers into my logic gates so I'm just going to set these up so when you press the button right it will then connect to each one of these gates so input a signal into those yeah and I want you to do it for each one of those buttons just set this up ready to go as we then set all the components to it. 
Okay, but what I will try and do by the end of this clip is have one thing that will will run and blow up the whole base, and all I've got to do is input one signal into one of these logic gates. But I'll explain that as we go through. So what we're going to now go and do is pick our path creator tool. And this is the bit that sounds like it's going to be a nightmare, but remember, we're not blowing up the whole wall. We're only blowing a little section of it, and we're blowing a little section towards the right here on the side here. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to randomly pick a spot, and I think this group here, you'll see there's four bricks. Yeah, uh, three, three uh, size threes and one square. Now, when you connect a brick to the path tool it connects to the bottom of the brick so you'll see here I'm choosing the middle at the very bottom yeah that, that's the default view when you connect any uh, a basic shape to a path tool now what we're going to try and do pretty much like we did with the uh, my ship clip about the bombardment we need to create like a path arc so it looks like the object is flying off at an angle now we're going to do each brick in turn as you'll see here I'm just doing a path setting the path that I'd like the the brick to brick to fly off and I want to make sure they all go off in different directions uh, and the, the more different directions you go the better effect it will look, it'll look uh, and they'll give the explosion that they has expanded all different areas now the big trick you'll see here as I'm trying I'm trying to keep it that the sure that the, sh the brick goes off in one direct move yeah that's pretty much straightforward so that's brick one so I go to the middle brick now the small brick go to the bottom of that brick because that's when we connect it doesn't move and then we're going to have this just come straight out and again try and keep a nice smooth arc if you can it's always tricky now I'll show you in a moment that you can adjust these dots one I don't think I've actually shown this in any of my uh, um, tutorials but once you create the path uh, what you can do is you can go back onto those points and you can click onto those points and readjust them now the only problem you'll find is sometimes uh, when you readjust it they don't do until you save it and reload the game. Uh, if you've got too much going on in the toy box, you'll move it and nothing happens. So sometimes when there's not a lot that when there's uh, not much going off, they'll move immediately. But if there is loads, then you'll find sometimes they don't do anything. Uh, and the only way to see that change is to save it, close it, and reload it back up again. Cool. Okay, that's what's going to blow off there. Okay, so again, in the middle, on the bottom of the second brick, so which is on the bottom of it, yeah, that's now going to come out, and I'm going to pick an angle. Uh, and occasionally I keep pressing the flipping it, uh, uh, exit button by accident, so I've made a mistake here, so I need to delete that part all out, and start that again, so let's go back to it. And again, pick a different angle again, that I'm going to do this across. Right, so we're going to go out over here. Now, I don't know if you just saw while I was doing this little route, uh, a shadow of a dragon just flew over by, over past. Now, I'm hoping most of my audience that watch these clips haven't seen uh, Game of Thrones, but you could do a Game of Thrones uh, version of exactly the same thing because they have a lot of siege battles and stuff like that. Um, but that is quite a violent TV show if you have seen it, but it is still very good. Right, hold on, there we go. Now, this is a good example. I can't get the shape. I've gone too much on the curve. So what I'm going to do here is, you'll notice here that it's not gone right. So I'm just going to move that back so it's lined up. But you'll see it dips in the middle. So it dips in the middle and goes out again. So it's slightly wrong. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back into my spark tool, pick on the actual uh, point on the path. Yeah. And then you can click on the uh, circle button. I can then readjust this and move this after the event. Which in comes in quite handy. And now I can adjust that forward. So that goes okay, but then you realise okay, it's better for that, but I need to move the one in the middle slightly higher. So I can grab that item off. And I can lift that up. There you go. And that gives me that perfect curvature that looks quite good. Perfect. Right, and then we'll do the next one. I'm only about 10 minutes into this, so that shows you how, how quick it is just to do these paths. But I have to find, you always think it's going to take longer than it really does. It's not never that too bad. Well, I say that. It's where if, if you're not sure what you're building, you tend to wander and, and dabble. So 
like I say, if you structure out what you think you want to do and you have a, an objective, then I find that you will get those items finished. If you're just wandering and seeing what's going to happen, they're the levels that you find you, you build three quarters and you never finish. There's a lot of levels I've done where I've just never got around to coming back to it. I was I didn't have a focus on what the main objective was. This was easy because I was just basing it on a film. All right, let's keep move this across. Right now, one thing I've found it a lot easier to do is when I attach all these bricks to these paths, they're all going to start moving. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and set all the all the actual speed and the actual uh, logic to those paths using the three logic gates that I've created. So that when I attach the bricks, they're already set up and done. I don't have to try and catch hold of them. I'm slightly a bit more efficient now with my path tools. And as I just show, you'll see this come uh, make sense a bit more in a moment. See, I really couldn't get that quarter bit in. So sometimes I just want to stuck in the ground. Sometimes I've gone down to the gone well half deep, but I just can't get that straight. So I'm going to have to undo that and move the main one back down on the list. But remember, it's always at the the actual middle bottom of the bricks. Yeah, that's where you connect to, not the middle of the inside of the brick, the very bottom of it, in the middle. You got to admit though, you got to admit the patience of trying to make that to work. Just couldn't do it, and then I went, you know what? Sod it. Press the undo. Go back to that box. Spark mode. Grab the last one. And just put it down. There you go. Why did he do that the first time? I don't know. Right, there you go. Oh, a little bit, not too much. I mean, you need to bring the arc back a bit. Again, making sure it doesn't look. There you go. So there's our one side that's going to blow up internally into the base. That's not too bad. So what we need to do now is what use these logic gates that I've got set up on the side. Right now, the first one obviously you may want to restart the level or you don't make the level, you lose the castle gets overrun. So this first one switches off the path tool so it's done its job. Yeah? That's what that one's gonna do. So a new logic connection on output. Can I turn all those paths off? Yeah. So I'm gonna go to each one of these and I'm gonna turn the path off. So turn the path off. Okay? Because the default view when you set up a path it's gonna be on. And I'm gonna need that to do all four sides of this side. Now remember, when you do the other side, you're going to have to repeat this process again. I'll point it out, but you'll have to repeat this section again. So all these paths, turn them off. Dun, dun, dun. Right, let's move it down. Do this one as well. There we go. Connect them all up. Just switch them off. There's only four I need to do. I've got three at the moment. There's three. So just the last one at the top. You know. On output. See that one? I've already done the connection because I can't see it, which is always a good telltale sign where you are. But all the bricks that we use, there's only four on this side that I need, and there's only going to be four on the other side I think I need as well, so it's not too bad. So we go back onto there, that one there, great. Turn that one off. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is when I start the level, I'm going to set the signal in to switch all the paths off. Yeah, which is great. The second logic gate is going to reset them all. Yeah, so when I start a new game, resets the actual item on the screen. So I'm going to do it on output, can we reset? So we've turned them off first, and can we click onto each path and say reset and play? They won't actually play because the path will have been turned off, So, but they'll all be ready to go again. So they're all these, and I've got to do it for each one of these points. So a new logic connection on output, each one I have to go in, and I have to tell it. There you go, can you switch the actual item off? That's two, two more to go. New logic connection on output. Reset and play. And we said so first one turns them off, second one does the reset and play. Okay. I have to stop doing these voiceovers in the middle of the night. It's the only way I can get perfect, there's no noise in the house at all. It really is the only way, but I tend to mumble and repeat myself, so apologies for that. Right, and this one, this is the one that sets them going, actually gets them moving. So on output, this one, we are just going to switch them all on. Okay, 
Only on that point do we switch them all off all nice and easy. But I thought I'd show it how I would build the level uh, and show how to do it in stages. And although this is not not actually happened till the final stage, this needs to be set up because it's going to uh, conflict with where I'm going to put all my other battle uh, islands where my soldiers can march it across and other things that we're going to build within this toy box. So this is why we have to do with this area first. Okay. Did I miss it? I must have done that one. There you go. So all of those now are switched on. Yeah. So now that I've got switched on, I'm going to go to properties of those and I'm going to set a speed to these. Now, I did a test run on this when I was doing these objects, so I'm going to set all these to 300. Yeah. So I go to each one of these these actual parcels and set them to 300. But then I must set each object to 300. So when we go and do the other side, I'll show you this. Because it's a lot quite fast, but 300 is not actually fast enough. I actually want it to be 600. So the way you get 600 is you do the path of 300, and then when you attach the object to the path, you go to the object and you set that to 300 as well, and that gives you like a 600 speed. But I'll explain that in a moment. But make sure at least that the paths on all of them are set to 300. That is important. Yeah. Properties, set that to 300. So all those paths now are set to 300. Now we've got those set up, we're going to connect those paths, all these, to the other things. So we're going to go on here and connect it to the path. But before I do that, as soon as I do it, the thing's going to start flying on the screen. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to press my first button. And my first button will switch all those paths off. So you don't get to see anything, but the paths have now all been switched off. Now when I connect the objects, nothing actually happens. They're all just stationary. So if I click onto the first brick, and if I place it correctly, the brick won't move. So I go new path connection, point down to the path inside it, and connect to the toy box path. You'll notice the brick is still there. And if that hasn't moved, then you put then you put the path originally in the first place. So I'm connecting all these to the toy box path. So new logic connection, toy box path. You'll see they're all connected, and I just got the single one now. New Lodge Connection, Toy Box Path, they are now all connected to that particular box. Which is cool. Right, now I can go to the property of the box. So you'll see I click on the box. You'll notice that that property was set to 300. So you need to set to 300. And you need to change the movement style to be one way and stop. Yeah, we want it to loop back and forth. One way and stop. You need to do that for every single one. So each one of these, we need to go into each one. We need to change the speed, when just by chance I've done it already, it's 300, and then you need to do it to one way and stop. Now, although you've done the path to 300, you have to change the object to 300 as well. Okay, so they're all set up. So if I come off here, and you do that for all the four objects, by the way, I've just done the two we do all the objects, but when you press the button now, they blow up into the ground like so. So if we press our other buttons, switch the path off, and now press our middle button, they get reset. So our middle button will now reset the path, so we can retest it. Press my button again, hey presto, they'll explode again. So this is what we're going to use to test the logic. Once we finish the game, I'm going to remove those off. So that now is all set up. We have our explosions. And if you look, look at how the bricks are staggered out. That's why it's important to have different levels. Yeah. So we have this, this hole that's appeared in the bricks. So we now need to do the exact same on the opposite side. Now I'm going to speed through this because these are exactly the same things we've done before, but I'm going to pick a number of bricks here. So you see I've got two bricks here, and then I'm going to make sure they all go across. So we're going to just do the part one. I'll do the first one, right? but we're going to do each one of these again. So each one I'm going to go to the base of the brick, of which, which way I'm going to move, and then I'm going to span that out across the screen. Yeah, so I'll just do the first one. Uh, but again, I've got to do it for every single one on this side, but this time they're exploding this way, this side of the map. And again, remember, you can press the triangles to readjust the actual shape. Now, as you'll see here, because I'm going to have troops attacking the base, this is why I need to see where the 
bricks explode this side so that I don't have anything conflict with any objects that I have moving in and you'll see those in the other clips that come through that you'll it comes and sense why we do this one first well, there we go now if you've seen my uh, how to use the force uh, clip which I did that ages ago I think it was over a couple of, over a year and a half ago or so that one is a similar variation to this instead that the Jedi triggers the the movement of the bricks to fly through the air here this is going to be an explosion and they blow up so it's the same logic I'm applying with this as I've done with this I've just rearranged it to fit as a, a, a wall blowing up now I was going to use the collapsible bricks to go through but it didn't I couldn't get it to look like a castle so I couldn't change the color of it this is why I, I haven't this is why I've done it this particular way because I couldn't format the other ones to look like uh, a castle brick. Right, that's our first loop. Now I'm going to repeat that now for all the other ones, okay? But just to save time, I'm just going to speed this through. Okay, let's just speed this up so we can see what this path looks like. So there we go. So on this side, there's slightly more. We've got five bricks on this side that move across. But all I've done is scatter them out, going crisscross over the mat. And so they try to look with different shapes. And that's my explosion on this side. Now I've got the path in. I have to do exactly the same like I did with each one of these logic gates. So I'm going to do a new logic connection on, on output for the first one. Can you turn all of them off? Yeah, so can you switch them off? Yeah, so you can turn off. So again, I've got to go and repeat that for each one. So I'm going to have to repeat this five times for this logic gate. And again, not going to bore you, but that's what you're going to have to do. So each one on output, turn the next one off. Let's speed this one up and then do the next logic gate. But you get the idea of what we've got to do here. Okay. Right, so when we do that one, we do the second logic gate. On this one, it's reset and play. So what we're going to do is new logic connection on output, go to the five ones you've just done and you've got to go to each one of those paths and you're going to set them to reset and play and you're going to do that for each one of the new five paths you've just added. And on the last one we're going to do the same again, new logic connection on output this one, we're going to switch them all on. So I'm going to do each one of these paths and I'm going to switch each one of those on and again I'm going to repeat that five times as well yeah so now again new logic connection and I've got to do it for every one of those paths now I'll speed it up just to help make the video speed go through a bit quicker and I guess that's all set up so switch that on right and then I've got to go on to every path and I need to then change the speed of that so let's go to each of the paths and you need to go to the properties of the, each of the five paths and I'm going to set them to 300 and you have to do that every single path not just the one I'm showing you because I'm just obviously speeding up for each individual one okay so each one I go change the properties of it and change the properties to 300 cool and you do that to each one right so now I've got them set to 300 what we're going to do here is uh, before we then attach the objects to the path we're going to switch them all off because we've now done our logic so we can come back out here and we can press the power button which will now switch all the paths off yeah so we can now jump back go back into spark mode and now we can link these shapes to the actual path we've gotten to so if we point to the path point to the object, square button, new path connection and point to the path at the bottom that's now going to get added so we jumping back and forth obviously once we've added them to the path we then got to change the property of each one but let's just get them to the, onto the path first Okay, so. so each one I'm clicking, I'm clicking onto the shape first, then do a new uh, path connection and then clicking it to the path tool. So it's shape first, new path connection, then move, move the pointer to the path. And if you point, if you put them at the base, at the center, you should have them connected up. So that should now be set up. Now the one thing I haven't done though, is I haven't switched them off to be single turns. So when I switch it on, 
they'll explode but you'll notice how slow they are and you'll notice they're constantly repeating yeah but that's a lot slow and that's at 300 and we want them at 600 Look, first let's switch that off there let's reset the shape so they all go back into place so that shows you the difference on the screen so to speed that up and we did set 300 I need to go to the properties of each of the shapes that I've got connected go to properties yeah toy box property I need to change that first to be 300 and that doubles the speed up that makes it 600 and then I must change the very last thing it's not looped it's played once and stop which is actually the second one down and I need to change all the shapes that are connected to each path so come out of that and do the same for each one and in this case I will now do the whole lot I won't speed this one through so change that to 300 go down that one went stop okay same one again properties top of path 300 So these on there has changed. Cool. Need to do the last one. So pop to that, change that to three hundred. Nearly missed it. One way and stop. Perfect. Now we can give that another test. So we press that. They now explode, and now we've got a hole. And that was the important part by having them staggered now you've got the effect that the wall has broken away and that's why you've got this weird odd shape coming through and that's where the enemy's going to come through which is quite handy so we've now got a giant hole in the castle so what we need to do now is we're going to set up the explosion that makes it look like it pushes those bricks out now I'm going to leave those pieces there and you can see we get to see where those pieces appear Yeah. But what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create some logic here. So I'm going to use some locators. This is where I want the huge explosion to appear. So I'll put a few of these on. Uh, I think I'm going to use about just I'm not sure. We'll just we'll chuck as many as you want. I think I, do I use eight there? I think it's eight that I use. Right now I want the explosion slightly staggered. So a big explosion. So trade. So I'm going to use three um, effects generators. And the effects generators are going to be linked to these locators, but they're going to, like I say, going to give the explosion of a bang, bang, bang as they all explode off into the ground. So let's just put these effects generators here. Now, before I get the connections up, we need to find what is the mechanism. How do we get that staggered effect? And if you've watched other clips, I've already mentioned these before. Uh, so what we're going to use is I'm going to use a path tool. Uh, and I'm going to use a, a locator running along on a path tool that triggers it off. My ship bombardment uses this similar thing. So I'm going to move this right out the way, out top of the top here. Uh, and I need five points, including my starting points. I need the first point, that's two, three, four, five. Okay, so the second start point is where we check to see have we uh, allowed to go from here. So I now need a uh, logic gate. And what this logic gate, this logic gate actually controls this path tool. And what we're basically meaning is this logic gate is going to become the key thing that triggers the whole explosion. This one here, this is the one that we're going to need to know where we keep. We can chuck the others away once we finish, but this is the one we need to know that actually triggers the whole thing. So let's go and find my logic gate. And this controls the explosion to occur. In. Now what we're going to say here is, when I put my locator on that path, when it reaches the second point, it's going to bounce back. So let's just put my locator over here for a second before I touch it. What I'm going to say is, right, when point reaches the path, yeah, new logic connection, when point reaches the path, can we uh, input a signal into there? 
okay now on output yeah new logic connection can you reset uh, the path so go back in here can you reset and play the path so the point will jump back for us to trigger the explosion, all I'm going to need to do is close that logic gate. Okay. And I'm just going to change the speed of the whole path to 300, so it's moving at quite a fairly, fairly rate. Now, so once I close that gate, the path will go across here. Now, I don't want it to blow up again and again afterwards, so what I'm going to do is on one of these other points, which I did on the fourth one, and you when point reached on path, yeah, can I then go back and reopen the gate? So like I say, if it's open, then the thing won't explode. It's only when I close it will the thing get triggered. Yeah, so new path connection on my locator. I'm going to pin that to the uh, path tool. Yeah, so I'm going to connect it to that path tool here. So if I do it on that list there. Now my, my occasionally my, my controller got a bit out of control here. So let's do toy box path. There you go. So it's now stuck in a loop. And all I have to do is close that gate and it will then come along this side. Now if that's the case when it comes into that section, that's what we want to blow it up. So that's a triggering point. So we do new logic section. When point reached on path, yeah. When we reached on path, can we go to our first wave here? And can we set an explosion off? So can we play once? And if you choose the once section, you get to have the huge explosion. You can't do huge explosions on repeat. I've covered that before in many of the other clips, but uh, just so you're aware of that. Right, so it'll blow the first one up. Second one, new logic connection. Yeah, when point reached on path, can we set the second thing for the second one? So explosion, single, so single thing, explosion, and then huge explosion. And then the last one. New path connection. When point reached on path, we we'll go back to the final one. Da, da, da. Play once, and explosions, and then huge explosion. It only appears in the play once option. Right. So that's now got our explosions on the screen. Right. But when we blow it up, we also need to trigger off the actual thing so we can say actually when the whole thing blows up let's set the item off so where do we set the explosion after the first explosion that's the first one so we do new logic connection on that one yeah when point reached on path can we automatically input a signal where we turn the actual items on so can we go into there and can we do new logic connection connect to that and say can you now input a signal in there that will then set them all off and they'll blow the thing up completely so all we need to do now is set these locators to these paths. So if we set them up, uh, I think I do two, two, three, three. I think so new logic connection, new locator connection, and I can connect to those paths. And with the effects generator, once you look, you link it to a locator, the explosion will always go off at the lo at the locator. Now as I go and create the logic, I keep the logic quite close, it's easy to move back and forth. It's only then once we've done the logic, we're going to pick up those locators and then we're going to spread them all around the, uh, the wall area where the explosion occurs. Now the beauty of this is we can add more, more dots and more explosions to test it out. Right. This is me showing you how to do it backwards. I'm just setting these all up. Now one thing I found with uh, having the Pro to do the recordings, although the video quality is better, I have mentioned this, it does take a lot more space. So I'm trying to keep my clips less than 40 or 45 minutes, that's the plan, so they can all stay in. And I've got a number of clips staggered. Uh, this will be the first one, and sadly I'm only going to get this one on uh, for today. Uh, but the rest should follow. Right, so let's now, now you'll see here is now I'm picking up each of the locators that are now linked to all the effects generators. And I'm just now going to position them around the hole from the bottom uh, and probably the first one towards the bottom as they go up. Not in the same place. There we go. 
So each one of these locates is set up and then we're ready to give it a test. So I want some on the outside. I don't want them all two on the inside, you won't get two. I want the explosion outside to give it a good enough impression. And if it's a big enough explosion, you'll you'll hide some of the movement of the bricks moving through anyway. That's the plan. And I'll just try and spread these out evenly. There's no real logic to it, just as long as the more random you do it, the more natural it will be. But you don't want them all one side, you need to have both sides of the wall because it's going to be internal and external and the explosion occurs. That's not too bad, pick them all up, move it across. Put that on top. Not bad. As I finish placing these last few locators, uh, just like give me a little time just to point out to you that this is a series of clips, yeah. So we've got uh, the next one is how to build a seize tower. The one after that is called how to breach castle wall. Then we've got how to slow down an army advance. Then we've got how to bombard a castle, and the other one is how to march against a castle. Uh, and there's also another one there, how to create kamikaze soldiers. There's quite a good little set here, and I'm going to try and get these all out uh, during this week. So fingers crossed I get them out. If not, it might overlap slightly into next week. And then I've got some more planned just before Star Wars Battlefront comes out. So I'm uh, going to be very busy with clips. I hope you all like these. Right, so locators in place. Yeah, what we're going to do now is just reset our path. Now what you'll notice here is these two buttons work side by side. The first button switches the whole path off, and then the next button when we press resets them. Yeah, well, theoretically, we do those two side by side, so I don't actually really, really need that second button. So what I can do here is I can do a new logic connection on the button on this this gate, and just input a signal into my reset and play option. That way, it'll turn all the gates off and press the button, so I don't actually need that button. So in this case here, I can press this. It, not only does it switch them all off, it actually resets it, and this is the one that actually fires them all open. So actually, this button completely, completely go, not needed whatsoever. Okay. So for our test, we don't need it. There's our gate, so our reset logic gate is going to become one link to that particular button, which is quite handy. Now, what I'm more interested in is now how do I actually set this with the explosions, and that is all controlled by that logic gate up on the top. Yeah, that logic gate is the one that does it all here on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another little button here, and let's place it so we can see the actual explosion in place. So let's put this button here on the middle of the castle just so we can see it. Yeah, and when I press that button, yeah, so new logic connection. When button pressed, we are going to close this gate up here at the top. By closing that gate, we'll set our path off, which will then launch the explosions and the boxes to be moved. So for me to do that all I need to do now is reset the wall. So let's go back and let's reset the wall. Right now if we're going to blow it up it might as well start to look like an actual wall. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to colour in the objects. Now this is the only time I can do a fill all option because we're going to have other bricks that we use in other objects that when we deal our seas towers. So in here we're going to come across here and we need to find the uh, there's different types of brick. Well there's Halloween bricks that I was going to use because I thought that looked quite good. Um, but they were too small so you can do apply tool yes. And I thought okay when I looked up it didn't actually match the castle colour. It was a slightly darker tone because it's the Halloween one. So I had to change this back to the uh, Brave Castle one. So I thought, yeah, it just didn't match, it was too dark. Yeah, the ones with bigger bricks. Yeah, so I'll change that one back. It's not an exact match, but it's the best you're going to get. It's better than using the uh, destructible pieces. And the destructible pieces, I find out, take a lot more, lot more, more memory. And at least with these tools, you can reset them. Okay, so let's change those back. Just a slight little difference in hint, nothing too much. Right, so what we're going to do is going to go up and we're going to look at the explosions. Let's see what we think of this to start with. Now, from what I can recall, I think we need slightly more. So we're going to stand here, we're going to press the button, ready? And hopefully when we press that button, it's going to close the gate 
and that is going to fire the explosion. Let's get ready. Three, two, one. Yeah, it's not bad. I think what we're lacking though is we need more explosions. So I'm going to get more locators and I'm going to link it to my tool. And this is a good little tip also, is you assume that I've got the locators in place. Uh, all I've got to do now is just put some more locators in and link these to them. So in this area, I think the first explosion needs a bigger explosion on the side. So let's go into here. Let's change these. And by just connecting them to this uh, effects generator, when it blows up, it will go off the screen. You'll notice though that the explosion didn't repeat because obviously when we went when the uh, on the trigger that's firing the thing through as it goes along that path it recloses the uh, reopens the gate which stops the item from happening All right you'll see here I've just reconnected these locators perfect All right now let's stick these slightly more on the outside the what you'll notice is and what I saw on that first explosion was that I had too many on the inside yeah so what you saw is there was the explosion and as the explosion out then the, the bricks were already flying out way before the explosion got there so I need the explosions outside I think that's probably better and you can play around with this you can add more dots more explosions All right let's have these more on the outside I want to see more uh, cover up otherwise you see the blocks all move and then there's the explosion okay That's it. Now, by some chance, I put in a checkpoint, I think, on here by accident when I dropped in, so I'll just delete that item off on the screen. Okay, right, so I'm going to go back over to here, the tool. And what I'm going to need to do is reset our, our uh, wall, so by hitting this target, it should reset it. Look at that for a shot. And let's give it a quick test. Let's blow it up. I don't think that's too bad. That's not too bad. A little bit better. Right, let's look at it from a different angle. Let's reset it again, see if I can hit it again. Cool. Cool. Right. And this is, we've got our exploding water. So I'm just going to move this over here on the screen. But this is the first stage of our Helm's Deep. So I've hoped you've liked this one. I hope you think the effects look cool. Uh, and then we'll incorporate this into our story. But as I say, there's about, about seven or so clips to come. Let's have a look at it from this view. That's not too bad at all. Right, guys, I'll leave you with this. I'll just show it a few more times so you can get the idea how it looks, and I'll get the next clip to you as soon as possible. Okay, guys, cheers for watching. Catch you later.